Hello chess family, it's me National Master Jesse James and it's time for another installment of the Fried Liver Attack. Alright, in this one we're going to be going over one of Black's best defense. This is the Polorio defense and well, I'll go ahead and say it, I believe this is definitely one of the ways that you can get a very good game against this whole knight attack or the fried liver attack. I really believe it's like a refutation line because, well, you know, white wants to go ahead and sacrifice a piece. Instead, we sacrifice a pawn back, and then we get really good attacking chances. And this one, we're going to be seeing a very nice crisscross checkmate too. So let's go ahead and take a look. Here we go. We start off with e4, e5, knight of three attacks the pawn, knight c6 defense the pawn, bishop c4. We start off with an Italian opening. And then black goes ahead and plays the two knights defense, knight to f6. And now, well, white goes for the fried liver with knight to g5 for the knight attack. Remember, it is not the fried liver unless they get to sacrifice on f7. And, well, right now there's only one good way to defend the f7 pawn. We're going to go ahead and play pawn to d5. And, well, white goes ahead and takes. And, of course, here we know do not take, do not allow the fried liver to happen. One of the best defenses is to not allow it to happen, right? So, well, here we go ahead and play knight to a5 this is the plurio defense remember if you do play knight takes on d5 knight takes on f7 and here we have plenty of lines showing where white has plenty of compensation for the attack so back to the game after e takes d5 do not take the pawn play this knight to a5 to attack the bishop there's two variations that can be can get played here or at least the most popular here we have the old variation of pawn to d which is pawn to d3 which we do have a video on that and then we have the variation we're going to take a look at today, which is the most popular move here, bishop to b5 check. And this is what I was talking about earlier where we get to sacrifice a pawn. Here we get to go ahead and play pawn to c6, allowing us to lose a pawn. With that being said, well, white does get an extra pawn, but they're going to go ahead and lose the attacking chances because, well, they're going to get behind development. So white's most popular move is to go ahead and take because, well, if you don't, then we can take back. So pawn takes on c6, pawn takes on c6. Do not take back with the knight here as you will lose your tempo and white is already better here. Here there's many moves to play here. Castles is one, pawn d3, knight c3. Basically, you just lost your tempo. That's why we take back with the pawn here and now the bishop has to move again. And here, well, the bishop goes ahead and goes to bishop to a4. Now we will go over a different variation, which is the queen to f3 variation, which seems to be the most popular way to play in the Polorio defense. But... In this game, we're going to take a look where they don't play queen to f3, and black just gets beautiful compensation in this game. So bishop to a4, and here we get a very strong move here. Kick your opponent back, pawn to h6, kicking the knight. The knight must jump back to f3, and now we get the very powerful move. One of the reasons why we control the center is to push our opponent's pieces back, and this happens here, pawn to e4. You can see like the last several moves is really just black repulsing or kicking back their opponent. And again, the knight must move. I mean, you're more than welcome to play something like queen to e2 here, but simple chess. Here you can just play something like bishop e6, which is now blocking the pin piece, and we're threatening to win the knight again. So, well, white has nothing really much better than to go ahead and play knight to g1. And, well, let's just bring out our dark square bishop so that we can get ready to castle. Here we go. Bishop to d6 gets played. Bishop c5 is also an interesting move, and actually it's, it's favored by the computer right here, and I can definitely... Definitely see a lot of reasons why. Already one reason is queen to d4, which is threatening a double attack for checkmate on f2, and also the bishop here on a4, which is unprotected. Remember, guys, anytime there's unprotected pieces, look for the double attacks. Anyways, back to the game. The bishop on d6 looks great here, too. Just in case white is able to castle, well, if they do, h2 is the target here. Remember, f2 is the weak pawn whenever you are uncastled, and h2 is whenever you are castled. White went ahead and played pawn to d3. It makes sense here. They want to get rid of the e4 pawn so they can get their knight up to f3. Well, black does the best move here. What do you do? Simple chess. When you're up in development, keep pushing it. We go ahead and castle. By castling here, we're going to go ahead and let our other pieces out into the game very fast. And here he went ahead and played d takes on e4. And this is a very bad move here. Although it looks like, well, now I can get my knight to f3. You just opened up the file to your opponent's king. And here, well, white was hoping to block with pieces. As you can see, this gets beautifully refuted. And, well, black just is able to give a beautiful checkmate at the end here. So, simple chess. Let's go ahead and take back. Knight takes on e4. And white already fearing the attack of the rook coming over played rook to, uh, I'm sorry, bishop to e3 right away. And now, well, black to move, a very strong move. Typically, I see this in Italian, um, I'm sorry, the Evans Gambit game in the Italian, uh, typically with white. But here, black is able to go ahead and stop white from castling and plays 
Bishop to a6, a beautiful move here. Why does this happen from castling? Because, remember, even after the knight came, comes out to f3, we see that you cannot castle through check. So the king cannot go over here. Maybe a better try here for white would have been something like knight e2. But even then, the computer's still giving this a negative 7, saying, man, you're just up two pieces and a pawn in this position. So the knight went to f3 here. The king is just stuck in the center here for white. And black plays a very cunning move, queen to c7. What does this move do? You will see in a few moves what black's plan here was. Well, white keeps developing. Knight b to d2. Developing with a threat, not a bad idea. Here, white was definitely hoping for knight takes, queen takes, so that they can go ahead and castle queenside. Unfortunately for them, they're playing against a strong play here. Develop with the threat. What do we do? Simple chess. Rook f to e8, developing and defending the knight. And here, well, this is pretty much the last blunder of the game here for white. White looks like they're making a simple move here with pawn to c3. But believe it or not, it is now black to move and win. And I will challenge you to go ahead and push pause to see if you can figure out these next forcing moves. It is now negative 12 in this position. Pretty much saying you're either going to be losing lots of material here or you're going to be getting checkmated. All right, hopefully you push pause, try to figure it out. What was the idea? Well, here I will give you the hint will end with a crisscross checkmate or also also known as a Bowden's checkmate. Typically, Bowden's checkmate is done whenever it's on the queen side castles, but here I'll go ahead and say it's like a Bowden checkmate because it's done with the two bishops. All right, so what's the move here? Here we need a clearance sacrifice, so we need to open up this position. And the whole idea is you can see that the light squares are taken up, so we want to take the dark squares. So what do you do? Here we go. Knight takes on c3, a beautifully forced move. Not only does it win a pawn, but it's also attacking the queen. Well, if you don't do anything, I mean, if you don't take, well, you're just losing. So they went ahead and played. Pawn takes on c3, and here, hopefully, you see it. Now negative 22 here. You're at least losing your queen, if not getting checkmated. In this game, they chose the latter. I'd rather just jump on the sword and just lose the game and uh, allow you just to checkmate me because playing the rest of this out will not be as fun. But here you go. Rook takes on e3. Check. And here, again, the only move that they could try was queen to e2, but here they just went ahead and gave up. F takes on e3, and do you see the final combination move? Hopefully you see it. Checkmate in 2, bishop to g3, check. H takes on g3, and here we go. Queen takes g3 for check and mate. And this is why they call it the crisscross checkmate, because the queen is over here taking up the dark squares, and the bishop went over here to take up the light squares. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. <laughs>